I imagine alcohol is certainly involved color. Alcohol's involved. Drugs are, are involved. And they either all start killing each other in, in, just, in just like a crazed days. Or, or more likely, more likely, they all start fucking each other. They all start stooping one another. I think that's probably what happens. <laughs> Hello, and thank you for checking out the video. I just want to let you know that I not only create content on my YouTube channel, Class in the Glass, but I'm also on Twitch, where I review movies, cartoons, and TV shows live, while also playing single-player games and multiplayer games. I also have a Patreon, where subscribers have access to hundreds of video and audio commentaries for films and cartoons, as well as podcasts and videocasts. In the meantime, thank you again for watching. Enjoy the video. We're going to go ahead and we're going to, uh, excuse me, <laughs> ton tied. I was like, God, just cancel the stream. It's over. <laughs> it's over, Chad. <laughs> Never mind. The review's canceled. We're going to go ahead and we're going to move on to the next part of my show. And that is my review for the Monster Mash by Bobby Boris Pickett and the Crypt kicker shed not the crypt keepers okay not the crypt keeper the crypt kickers that's who created the song chat and the person i have to thank for this particular song suggestion chat for this review today is deadpool thank you so much deadpool for suggesting it and good to see it in the chat right now hope you're having a very nice day but you know before getting into the the main song a little bit of the album and just the history of Bobby Pickett and and the Crypt Kickers, I, I want to briefly kind of just talk about my my own history with the Monster Mash, you know. And I feel like a lot of us probably had a had a similar experience with the Monster Mash chat. Yeah, we have a shared experience, you know. I remember hearing this song constantly growing up a, as a kid, especially around October, you know, leading up to Halloween, you know, hearing at school dances on the radio on on television. At a variety of stores. I mean, just everywhere. We, we, were, we were inundated with, with this song during this, you know, fall season. And, um, and you know, just, just growing up. I think it was all part of our, our, our lives, to be completely uh, honest. And, um, you know, maybe one could argue uh, that the song is perhaps overplayed. I still say it's like it's, it's a very fun an enjoyable song that I think is perfect for your all ages. You can be five years old or 55 years old, and it's just a really easy song to listen to. Um, it's also one of those songs that I think just kind of gets you in the mood for October, you know? You know, Halloween and just trick-or-treating, like, in general. You know, I, I remember hearing the song playing at, like, several people's homes when I was, like, trick-or-treating over the years as, as a little kid. You know, it's, it's just that obvious timeless song uh that's essential for the fall season leading up to halloween and then very much on halloween you know i mean it, it's, it's one of those just classic songs that's been in, in the pop culture zeitgeist for i mean at this point 60 years you know now the song the the monster mash is the creation of bobby boris pickett uh who was an aspiring actor at the time and musician um, and also his fellow uh, bandmate, his fellow Crip Kicker chat, uh, Lenny uh, Capizzi, in 1962. Now, it's said that, you know, during an evening show, uh, Pickett was just kind of goofing around, and he did a monologue and, and, like, multiple imitations of, you know, Boris Karloff, you know, the, the, the famed film actor known for his, you know, many horror roles and, and monster movie performances, uh, and he also did it. He also did the, the voice for a, a number of, of of songs, and apparently, uh, it, it was like a, just a huge hit with the crowd. You know, they, they that they were performing for, and they thought it was like very very funny. And Capizzi, you know, he actually encouraged him to do it more. You know, during their uh, performances. You know, uh, you know throughout you know the their multiple uh, shows that they had they had booked, and eventually they just decided to just go, hey, let's just you know create a song. Uh, with a number of other uh, uh, musicians, which, which eventually became the, the Crypt Kickers, which include uh, Gary Paxton, Leon Russell, uh, Johnny uh, McRae, Ricky Page, and Terry Berg. And again, they would later be credited as the, the Crypt Kickers. And um, also, 
uh, many of the like the sound effects that are used throughout it, you know, are, are actually I think like kind of fun and really cool. I mean, you have like the jingling of chains, and you have like the the coffin like creaking on its on its hinges, and there's tons of different sound effects like in the actual uh, song itself. You know, I mean, it makes it nice and, and spooky and fun, right, for for viewers or for listeners really. And it was originally released as a single. And it was a very, very successful one at, at that. And, and, and then later on, it was uh, eventually included in an album called The Original Monster Mash, which included like other horror comedy theme songs like, you know, Blood Bank Blues and Graveyard Shift and, and Wolfsbane. And then in 1962, you know, once all this stuff, stuff, you know, came out during that year, it was number one on numerous top 100 charts, you know, for just for the month of October. And even 60 plus years later, uh, after it released, it's often been featured on other top 100 charts during the fall season. It's, it's considered to be one of the most popular perennial Halloween songs of all time. And has constantly been, been sampled by other artists across multiple genres, including rock, country, hip hop, heavy metal, and, and even more. Um, the song has also been just adapted into like numerous animated and, and live action films uh, over the decades and has been featured in just hundreds of films over its six decades of, of existence. And, you know, the song itself, like the lyrics, you know, it's, it's referring to a, a mad scientist who pretty much comes up with this, this new dance, you know, the Monster Mash, and has invited all of his friends and monsters from the, you know, Universal Monster movies. So everyone from, you know, I mean, Dracula's reference, Frankenstein's monsters reference, the Wolfman, you know, the mummy, they're all referenced in the song. They all come to his place, and he teaches them this, this, this new dance, and they all, you know, get high, Chad, and they all go crazy. They all start fucking one another. That's what happens in the song. And, you know, again, I think the best way to hear all those actual references, Chad, is by listening to the song itself. And so let's actually go ahead and start listening a little bit of that particular song, which I'm sure we've all heard. I'm actually, I'd be surprised. Like, let me know, for those of you who are currently in the chat right now, if you've never heard this song before, I would be shocked if, if, if any of you told me you've never even listened to the song or even heard of this song. Let's go ahead and play. This is actually a fun video I found too. Really like this video. It's 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 completely uh, animated as as well. So let's go ahead and take a look at uh, the Monster Mash by Bobby Boris Pickett and the Crypt Kickers. Here, here's some of the sound effects of the bubbling and things and like the chains and stuff that are all jingling and jangling. And the lyrics pop up in the video, which I think is really nice. When my eyes beheld an eerie sight, for my monster from his slab began to rise. And suddenly, to my surprise, he did the monster. <laughs> Look at that googly eye. Look at that Triclops gravestone. <laughs> it caught on in a flash. He did the match. He did the monster match. From my laboratory in the castle east. To the master bedroom where the vampires feast. Ah! The ghouls all came from their humble abode. So they're drugs they're bringing, the shell, the alcohol, the drugs. My electrode. They did the match. They did the match. Like little skeleton match. playing on the drum. I think that's really adorable. It was a graveyard swing. It caught on in a flag. It's, it's a really pleasing artwork. A really pleasing aesthetic, right? It, it goes with the song match. perfectly. The zombies were having fun. The party had just begun. Included it's impossible not to sing along to you're absolutely sung. correct human the absolutely correct rocking, all were digging the sounds Igor on chains back by his baying hounds the coffin bangers were about to arrive with their vocal group the crypt kicker five. yeah the crypt kickers <laughs> the monster man. And, and like referencing it the people that were you know part of the band it caught on in a flash. It really did. 60 plus years it's caught on, yeah. <laughs> Out from it's never gone away. Voice did ring. Seemed she was troubled by just one thing. Opened the lid and shook his fist and said, Whatever happened to my Transylvania twist? No one cares about a Drax. So, yeah, I mean, that is, um, you know, uh, 
and, and it's a credible song. I mean, to simply put, you know, I mean, I think we don't just often think about it, you know, like growing up because we literally, I mean, we grew up with it. We we're inundated with it pretty much every year. You know, we, we've been hearing it probably since we were little babies chat, right? And yeah, it, it just has this timeless, this timeliness uh, to it. You know, it's it's in you know it's like you know swing music, but you got the jazz in there too. It's got like you know a nice groovy beat. It's just it's just really really fun. It's and you know the fact that it's been just featured in, in pop culture for for decades. I mean, you know, it, sampled by other artists, um, featured across multiple movies, a lot of horror movies. So I mean, I certainly was hearing this song. You know, since I'm a huge, you know, horror genre fan and it's in a variety of subgenres, you know, it's featured in a lot of those movies. I mean, everything from from slasher films to body horror movies to supernatural thrillers to thrillers themselves. I mean, it, it's going to show up there. You know, it's kind of like a nice it's 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 a setting song. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, hey, to establish like, hey, this is the fall season. This is the month of October. This is uh, this is Halloween. Let's just play the monster match because we know the audience, the viewers, listeners, as soon as they hear that song, they'll be like, all right, I know exactly where I am. We're in the middle of the fall season where, where it's Halloween and, you know, trick-or-treating, all that. I mean, it just, it just, it just, it just brings up, like, all the memories of, of Halloween that we experience throughout our respective lifetimes. And I think that's what just kept this song, the pop culture uh, zeitgeist. I mean, I remember, like, listening to this in school, like, always, shit, like, in like, kindergarten, in elementary school, in middle school. You remember, like, you had those, you had those um, days in school, like, maybe they would let you, like, dress up in your costumes and stuff, and that they would, you know, for that one day, like, they'll play maybe some fun, you know, horror movies, maybe something like, I don't know, uh, The Monster Squad, that's what I was, you know, was showing back in the day, or maybe some Universal Monster movies or, or, or something, you know, kid horror films, right? But, you know, before we'd watch the movie, right, they would, they would, they would, uh, they would get the, they'd get the apple cider for us, they'd get the donuts from, like, Dunkin' Donuts or something like that, or Tim Hortons, and, you know, my case, I grew up in Buffalo, New York, and there's so many Tim Hortons there, and then, you know, the teacher would get out the CD or the cassette in some cases, chat, and they put it in there, put it in the boom box, and they just play that, and then as the kids would just, you know, kind of talk or whatever and commiserate until they put on the movie, like, that's, those are the memories that I have, like, of this, of this song, you know, it's so specific, like, in my mind, I remember, like, in fourth, I remember, like, in fourth grade, I remember, like, in fourth grade, I had this awesome, awesome werewolf mask that I was, like, super proud of, I remember wearing it, and I remember that song playing, drinking, my, like, I, but I had, like, this mouth hole so I could drink the cider, like, everyone thought my mask was so cool, I was like, oh, I felt kind of special, because, uh, of, 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 of my costume at the, at the time. And I remember like that song playing. So it kind of has like a special place in, in my heart, honestly. And I think also like a special place for, for other people, because I mean, for all my, for everyone that, you know, that's here right now, I'm sure you, you all absolutely loved, you know, this, this song growing, growing up. And I, and I certainly did. And it's like, I think also just a lot of kids is, um, just kind of associate with, but yeah, adults too. Like I said, it doesn't matter if you're five years old or 55 years, uh, years old, you know, you're, you're going to enjoy, enjoy this song. And I think that's why it's uh, really, really special and uh, perfect, you know, for the fall season leading up to Halloween and obviously listening to it on Halloween. It's, it's, it's absolutely fantastic, chat. So Bobby Boris Pickett. And and the Crypt Kickers, they they created a, a a perfect song in my opinion, that is great across multiple generations. Whether it be baby boomers, whether it be Gen X, whether it be millennials, whether it be you know Gen Z, it works for everybody. And it's the reason why it's you know one of the, the biggest hits of all time. Why it's been so enormously successful critically and 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 commercially. So uh, yeah, it's it's a song that I'm actually glad you know that 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 won, and I'm 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 glad you guys really enjoyed too. But over you guys, I mean, what what were your experiences with with this with this song? Did you grow up with it? Did you not like? I'm actually legitimately, I'd be shocked. I would be shocked if if we have like even one person here who has never even heard of this song or has or has listened to it before. I'd be very very sorry. I feel like everyone has certainly in in, in the West, certainly in, in America. You know, it's kind of a part of, 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 of that, you know, American tradition, if you will. But please, please, please let me know. 
five minutes later. So the Monster Mash, so I think uh, it's I think some people might get confused because sometimes people think of the Monster Mash, you know, like in the, in the song itself. It's not referring to like a song. It's actually referring to a, a dance. Like this mad scientist, you know, he's doing all these kinds of creations. He doesn't come up with a song. He comes up with a dance, right? And so now he come up with this dance. He's like, oh, shit, I want to share this with all my friends. That's what I want to do right now. And so he's calling up, you know, Dracula. He's calling up, you know, Frankenstein's monster. He's calling up the Wolfman, the Mummy, the Gill Man. You know, you name it. Got Igor in there helping him, chat. He calls them all in. He's showing them the, the, the Monster Mash dance. And Drac's like, does everyone remember the Transylvanian twist? Like, Drac, it's not always about you, Drac. Okay? All right? We're not doing the Transylvania twist. We're doing the Monster Mash. That's what it's referring to. I think it's pretty cool. But I imagine alcohol is certainly involved color. Alcohol's involved, drugs are, are involved, and they either all start killing each other in, in just in just like a crazed days, or or more likely, more likely, they all start fucking each other. They all start stooping one another. I think that's probably what happens. 